Welcome to Primates, the podcast where we explore primates in popular culture from Chimpan A to Chimpan Z. I'm your host, Matt Stewart, and this week on the show, joining us back in the monkey house, it's the host of the Do Go On and Book Cheat podcasts. It's the book chook himself, Mr. Dave Warnicky. Hey all, great to be here with you on this fantastic podcast day. Oh, thank you so much. It's so great to have you. We re- very rarely do daytime podcasts. I was just thinking, I was, that's why I said fantastic, I was going to say fantastic morning, but I thought that's going to time this too much. But anyway, yeah, it's true. We, we rarely, we rarely pod in the morning. It's uh, yeah, we both have to set an alarm and it is 11 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did sound like we we're, are you podcasting at 5.30, 6 a.m.? No. Okay. It's yeah, we're just sneaking in time. technically still the a.m. So that's okay. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I've just had my breakfast. The, uh, the earliest I've had it this week, I reckon. I had it yesterday. I had a PM breakfast, which is no good. I'm all and, out of whack. Okay. But the question is, did you have the same breakfast for the PM yesterday as the AM today? Or does it depend on when you're eating? No, I always have the same breakfast. Uh, I've, I normally settle into something for a little while. And at the moment, it's oats and milk. Oh. Of course, with a cup of Earl Grey tea. Oh, of course. But that doesn't matter what time of day it is, does it? It's always uh, it's always Earl Grey time somewhere in the world, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I didn't know what you meant. So we're talking today about a show that you love. It's I called love The X Files. Yes. Is it one of your favourites? I would put it up there in probably my... Oh, it's hard to say because you're going to ask now, but probably a top five ever show for Ooh, me. Oh, so you're not quite sure if it makes the old... Uh, what's the president's wall in america the mount Cliff? rushmore mount rushmore yeah. doesn't quite make mention. the mount rushmore i'm trying to get that up as a catchphrase of mine i know everyone says it already but i think it's so funny when people <laughs> say yeah it's uh, to be on my mount rushmore of uh toiletry bags you know like any sort of random <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah of the uh, sp- spreads yeah that's on my mount rushmore of spreads vegemite for sure Definitely. It's pretty good, but it's, it's not on the Mount Rush. I mean, I wouldn't spend uh, hundreds of hours carving a rock face into the shape of a Vegemite jar, but uh, it's still pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's no jam or marmalade. Yeah. Well, that's a character I was playing. Obviously, it is better than jam and marmalade. Yeah, of course, of course. I'm not a maniac. All right, quickly. Mount Rushmore of spreads. Vegemite. Peanut butter crunchy. Okay. Peanut butter Peanut smooth. Peanut butter smooth. Thank goodness. You have to have it there. And, of course, Promite. Ah, not a lot have, of variety to be honest, but I reckon I would have had uh, just a block of butter there. Block of butter, spreadable, spreadable, and also to be honest, it's much easier to carve just a block than it is to chop a jar. That's true. That's smart. So that's t- a time saver. Imagine having to like chip out the lettering of Vegemite. <laughs> a pain in the ass. Or crunchy. But I guess the good thing about the two peanut butters is you've already got the the template done. Yeah, that's so, right. So then one of them you just knock out crunchy on top or you could just write smooth slash crunchy on it and people would get it but you give yourself an extra spot then that's smart oh yeah great yeah just say peanut butter breakfast in general in general whatever whatever floats your boat whatever your preference is whatever's going crunchy's number one though i'm sorry (laughs) but i make no apologies for that um now my mind's been ticking away here and i've been thinking about actually i reckon x files would be on the mount rushmore great who who else have you got on there my faces the would be, I'd have, yeah, Sandy Cohen from the OC. <laughs> now I'd have um, Homer Simpson's face. Yeah. Hercule Poirot's face. Oh, yes. I'd have uh, Dr. Mark Sloan, played by Dick Van Dyke on Diagnosis Murder. Oh, face. that's on your, that's in your four. Top four. And then uh, I would also have Dana Scully from the X-Files. Wow. Dana's your favorite character on the X-Files? <laughs> or just yeah, most carvable face? <laughs> yeah, most carvable face. No, she's great. Really, and uh, this year's most carvable face goes to <laughs> drum roll, please. <laughs> what about if if you were such a big fan of Gilligan's Island, you, all four were from Gilligan's Island, <laughs> and the rest. And the rest. <laughs> they didn't make. It. <laughs> That's not bad. 
Yeah, I wonder what my Mount Rushmore would be. That's a tricky one. I think Sim- Simpsons would have to be on there. Maybe Seinfeld as well. That's sort of the two oh, yeah. classic Man, comedies. Too. Poirot, you've really got me into Poirot. I love it. It's a real happy place show for me. I love it. But I'd, I'd, have, to have, I'd have to think more about it. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, also, I, I haven't seen it a long time, but I like David Duchovny's other big show, Californication. Or I really, I never really gave it a go. I really, sh- really should because I, d- I mean, I did just say I love Dana Scully, but I do love The Fox. Yeah, Mr. Mulder. Does his acting improve, or is this the character in the X Files? <laughs> He's sort of just a bit wooden, and that's all part of the fun. Yeah, but then like sometimes there's these like silly little things that he says. Like, did you notice in the episode we're talking about today, which I don't know, have you introduced that yet? Uh, well, so we're talking about the X-Files and in particular, uh, the most monkey episode that I've seen so far, which is called, it's the last episode of season one. It's called the Earl, Earl and Meyer mask. Flask. Oh my goodness. Flask. <laughs> it quite clearly says flask. There. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. Uh, did you notice? And this is something because I that's haven't a glas- it. A glas- it's like the Glasgow kiss. <laughs> The Ellen Meyer mask is when you uh, bottle someone in the face. Uh, okay. Is it the flask when you do it with a flask? The flask is when you do it with the flask. You know, people have like a, a small gun taped to their, their ankle. You whip out a flask taped to the ankle and just start beating someone over the head. <laughs> so the Ellen Meyer flask is a certain kind of scientific flask. Is that I've never right? heard of it before, but it's like a... I guess it's sort of like a beaker or one of that sort of thing. Oh, well, that makes sense because that actually is quite integral to the episode. Yes. The thing that the monkey pisses in, <laughs> or arguably monkey piss, that is an Ellen Meyer flask, I believe. That is very true. We're probably going to get some budding boffins messaging and saying, oh, actually, that is uh, not quite true. That's a beaker, huh? I, um, I was on the, in the local paper as a kid. Uh, we went, <laughs> big, we went big on claim, a big claim here and it went on an excursion and, uh, to, I think a high school, we we're in primary school, we went to a high school and the science department there taught us about science using uh, bubble bubbles. So we had to make our own bubble machines and I was, every, that was the project beforehand and I had forgotten about it. So I just grabbed a coat hanger and made a big loop out of it. And, uh, I made the biggest bubbles by far. Seriously. <laughs> so I, I got in the in the paper because I made the biggest looking bubbles and then that and then the the photographer picked a couple of girls who I think he picked them because he thought they were cute or something because their bubble Ugh. things were not that good oh come on mate you know it's it needs to be more than that oh you, oh, you want to sell issues of your paper with cute primary school kids look I'm making a, I'm casting aspersions there <laughs> that's allegedly <laughs> Yeah, of course, just in case. But anyway, I remember the headline was budding boffins and I had no idea what that meant. That's why I said that weird phrase just then. But it means something. <laughs> it means <laughs> that, aspiring scientists, I think. But. So budding boffins. So that's two words that are pretty close to the word bubble, but he didn't say it either <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah. Budding Bubble, bubbles? I would have said bubbing bubbles for sure. <laughs> that would have been my headline. Anyway, what were we talking about? So... This episode is the last one of the first season, and I've only just started watching the second season. Uh, quite enjoyed the first season. You reckon the second season's even better? Yeah, I reckon it really it sort of finds its fair. I still enjoy the first season, and I think even towards the end of the first season, it starts to get a bit more, you know, they find out what, what's going on a bit more, and then the, the second season's got probably two or three of my favourite episodes for the whole run. Right. Well, how would you explain the show in, in general for people who don't know it? Right, so basically the X-Files is like, it's a couple of budding boffins who have been <laughs> put together, if you will. Uh, well, the X-Files uh, is a department that focuses on unexplainable, basically mysteries and crimes related to the unexplained. So it might be alien stuff or it might be vampires or werewolves or ghosts or things like that. And... Um, Basically, they are the original odd couple that have been put together. Fox also... Mulder, who believes in everything, and then Dana Scully, who is a medical doctor, but also an FBI agent, and she's been pushed into the department to keep an eye on him, basically. But over the run, she gets less sceptical, only slightly, but they become very, very close as they investigate the paranormal together. And they really, they say it a few times, even very early, 
after mustn't have known each other that long, but they they're the only one that each other trusts. That's they right. Say that a bit. And I'm like, it doesn't sound like you trust him, Scully. You keep going. <laughs> Every time he has a theory, you're like, Mold, are you sure that that happened here and not in your head up here? <laughs> she, she really does sort of. He said that go. about his, because he's okay. he, one of the early storylines. I imagine this runs through the whole series is that uh, we find out that his uh, sister was abducted by aliens. That's right, Samantha. And it's not, it's not like we're not thinking. Did did she really or not? It's like they show footage of it. It definitely happened. Um, this isn't a world where it's unsure. This is a world where aliens exist and they've come to Earth a lot, and the yep. government know about it. Um, this is like a show where the conspiracy theories that you hear about they're all real, pretty much. Yes, but having said that, Dana Scully is still very skeptical. Yes, about Even that. These proof of it most weeks. Yes. And I'm afraid that is one of the sort of frustrating parts as the show goes on, like even in this episode, which is in the first season, and there's about seven or eight more to go after this. She says to Mulder, look, when he's told her about, oh, I think this is, there's something in this case, which we'll talk, I suppose we'll talk about in a second, but she even does say, look, Mulder, I wanted to apologize to you. You were right. I should have listened. And yeah. you think, oh, this is the start of her changing her tune about these kind of things. But no, no, no matter how much she sees over the next eight years, she never truly believes. It's got to be. I mean, this is obviously just a, that's a, something that the writers need. They think they need her character to be the skeptic the whole way through. But I just don't know if it's that necessary. Yeah. We all know it's real. So it's sort of, and can't it be like it? their boss or someone who has it and the bosses change over or something. There must be another way of using that device of having the skeptic involved without having it in such an unbelievable way that someone who sees proof on a regular basis remains a skeptic. It's, it's gotta be scientific Mulder. It's like, what is science? It's figuring out <laughs> unknown stuff, you know, and it's, and Mulder's done that. It becomes science. You've seen proof. What is science? It's like she's talking about science from our world where none of this stuff is proven, but is in the world where it is all like evidence is mounting up all the time, even though the public don't really know about it, I guess. That's true. But even in this episode, a fellow medical doctor who's like a DNA expert analyzes some DNA, which uh, at first we think could be monkey pee, but then it turns out to not be. What's the classic uh, line? Uh, if this turns out to be monkey pee molder, you're on your own. You're on your own. <laughs> so yeah. that's the fa- that's what's in the Erlenmeyer flask, and she gets it examined. And then a fellow doctor who's a DNA expert says to her, "Oh my God, in DNA there's only four types of thing building blocks that stuff's made of in in known humanity, but this has six, and yeah. it like blows her mind. That's big, and." Uh... For a trouble, that doctor gets knocked off before the end of the episode. Yeah, we never see her again. <laughs> Probably by the government, right? That's the idea. Yeah, some black ops. Oh, man. Yeah, that, those sort of things are interesting as well. Uh, why do people get knocked off all the time for knowing too much, but never Mulder and Scully? And I wonder if it's because they're the two main characters. <laughs> yeah. Well, even um, their like, inside informant, known only as Deep Throat, who's a big part of season one and the ongoing storyline. Even he says to Scully, Mulder's too high profile. That's why they won't kill. Because he gets captured by these Black Ops guys. He's too high profile, too high profile. Yeah. Really, I think you're right. It's because he's too high profile in that he is the main character on this show that is starting to rate pretty well. Yeah, I I definitely did not buy that line at all. So that does not make sense. I kind of like how they try to explain it. Or maybe I would have preferred them not to, or had found a reason that would have made more sense. I mean, these are people that I don't, this isn't really spoiled too much in the future. It turns out that they were involved with the JFK assassination. Right. And if he's not too high profile, but Mulder is, I don't get <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. They, they say, yeah, there's another time and maybe in season two where someone says, uh, we can't kill him. So, uh, in the second season, um, the smoking man. So the smoking man's this mysterious guy in the first season who's always in the background of the office of uh, Scully, Scully and Mulder's bosses. He's in the room, I think, when Scully gets the job of teaming up with Mulder. 
And uh, we don't really know what, what he is, but we find out towards the end of the first season and the second season that he's one of the ones probably trying to cover things up. He's from higher up and we don't know who he's working for or whatever, but he puts someone on to work with Mulder, who's basically report. He's basically a spy for him. And that guy asks the smoking man, why don't we just kill him? <laughs> and, and he, and the smoking man says something like if we, uh, Something like it, if we kill him, it'll make. It made it sound like he was he was saying that it would make his followers fanatical. It'd yeah, turn him like into a martyr sort of thing. Others will be in his place or something like that. Yeah, it's like I don't know if that's true. If he is, so he's so brilliant that he's the only, he's the one they're worried about finding out the truth, but they can't kill him because someone else will take his place. Well, you know, it does like it doesn't. Anyway, there's uh. Something I catch myself doing a bit when I'm watching a far out show like this is I'll question sort of the logic to it. And it's like, you're watching a show about aliens and uh, guys who um, piss green and stuff. That yeah, yeah that like, point, last right? week there was a man who could like set fire to a building with his mind. And yeah. Like questioning that. <laughs> no. Oh, uh, but the logic of this doesn't quite <laughs> add up to me. The fire mind man, for sure. Yeah, of yeah, course. That makes that. sense. We no all get doubt it. about that. Well, the... So- the humanoid, um, it basically like a leech, leech, the, a human leech, humanoid leech, and the FBI didn't just kill it because it had killed so many people. The <laughs> FBI goes, "We're gonna, we're gonna send it across town uh, for psychological evaluation." I'm going, "What are you doing? Kill this leech, man! It's a monster. It knows nothing but killing." And they're treating it like, it's so strange. They'll knock off their own operatives, but not this monster. Yeah, they want, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense, does it? Anyway, uh, it broke out of the, it it went across town in a truck with one man driving. It killed that man and escaped (laughs) into a toilet where it liked to live. So the X-Files, cool show, a lot of good stuff going on. But I wanted to ask you, so there's, there's two types of episodes. There's the mythology episodes, which explore the overarching story relating to Fox's uh, abducted sister, the existence of aliens, people like the smoking man trying to cover up all the cover-ups, basically exploring that. And then there's also what's called monster of the week episodes yeah, where they have like Mulder will fly out to New Jersey to uh, investigate the Jersey devil or he'll, you know, go to something in Tennessee and there's like something going on where people are disappearing. So, and then we find out that it is just one monster. And by the end of the 45 minute episode, it's all wrapped up. They're more like what the Poirot you... episodes. Yeah. but There's a what mystery you... and the geniuses solve it by the end. Yeah. But what do you prefer? Do you find the, the monster of the week ones, which can be a bit more humorous sometimes some yeah. are serious, but then other ones are like really, really silly. More or humorous, you... but also more satisfying because they conclude. Yes. Whereas the arc ones are, um, well, the what did you call them? The mythology episodes. Mythology yeah. episodes. They, I it depends on the episode. I think as a general rule, if I was just going to watch one episode, I'd prefer to watch a Monster of the Week one because it is a, it's a entire piece, yep. start, middle, and end. Whereas the other ones can feel a bit unsatisfying at the end sometimes. Uh, so yeah, I, I'd say. At this stage, because I haven't gone, I haven't got through the overarching story too far because I'm only the start of season two. I'd, I'd have to go with Monster of the Week. But I imagine looking back, and a lot of the fans that I've spoken to, they prefer the mythology episodes because I guess because they know where it leads to, which has given me hope that it's going to be uh, worthwhile sticking at. <laughs> Well, I don't want to. I don't want to sway that opinion one way or the other. So I just want to say anything. Because okay. you don't want to be the one where, in a year's time, I've finished the new episodes and I'm like, Dave, that was not worth my time. <laughs> <laughs> you dogged me there. Yeah, the um, the Jersey episode was another one that could have been. That's a bit of a prime eighty episode. It's a. They called it like a missing link, which I know uh, is not a real thing. A scientist once pulled me up on that. Apparently, I call called a missing links at some point on the show and there is no such thing as a missing link because that's not how evolution works but that's the kind Uh, of idea that it's a they've evolved differently and it's more like it's come off a 
off a, br- a different branch, you know, back in evolution some point, and they have evolved slightly differently. But it's a an ape, you know, like us, like a great ape. But a this one didn't they? They pulled livers right out of humans' bodies. I don't know what kind of ape does that, but um, still. Or am I mixing up with that other liver guy? There's this character who loved livers. He was a real slivery guy. Oh yeah. He could. Uh, and he also, he also you know, like licking newspaper and then making yeah. a nest out of the news. That was yeah. That's I think it's called squeeze that one. Yes, he that's was a in a couple episodes. He he came back uh, because they arrested him, but um, he got let out later. Spoiler alert! Obviously, lots of spoils here today. So anyway, I guess let's talk about the episode we watched. Can Great. you explain it to me? Because this was a mythology episode. And uh, the monkeys came into it because there were lab monkeys. Um, and we, I guess it's, st- I'll, I'll start it off. You've watched it more yeah, recently great. than me, so you'll be able to fill it in a bit. But it starts with a car chase. A guy's on the run. He gets cornered by the cops. And then he, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't stop when they ask him to. He runs off and he jumps into the sea. He's been shot and he clearly bleeds some sort of translucent green gloopy blood and he gets into the sea but he never resurfaces and they can't find him at first at least yeah we don't know anything about these guys up until this point right no i don't think we've seen this character before and then basically Mulder gets a tip off from deep throat who's sort of like a mysterious guy who obviously has knowledge of lots of things. And I think in a previous episode, he told Mulder that he's one of only three people that's ever uh, executed an alien. Is that right? Yeah. Him? Yeah. So he's obviously if, if he's telling the truth, he's very high up. He's on the inside. He often has these little leads for Mulder, but sometimes they're a bit, bit intangible. And Mulder's like, what do you, what does this mean? Just tell, just tell me, just yeah. tell me. Yeah. But uh, he calls up Mulder and says, Hey, turn on channel eight and watch the news. And it's a news report about a man running away from the cops and disappearing into the ocean. And that leads Mulder onto the case. And you bring Scully in as of course she's skeptical. She's like, why are we even here, man? Why are we even here? (laughs) Scully, just, uh, there must be an episode somewhere where she goes, you know what? I'm going to go with you today, Mulder. (laughs) Don't hold your breath. (laughs) Not a single episode. Like they couldn't, they do an episode where she bumped her head. And she wakes up believing and it goes away again. That's that, the kind of thing. That's the kind of thing they actually do. They do little explore stuff like that on the show. They actually do. Yeah. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> so, so Mulder then, uh, he's sort of on the scent now. Deep Throat's got him in there. I find Deep Throat an interesting character. I really like the actor. I think he's, he's great, but I, is he from, is he from other stuff? I was looking him up before. His name is Jerry Harden. And he looks like he's, I think he's still kicking. He was born in 1929. So that makes him. Wow. 90, right? Yeah. 1991. For me, he's just this amazing mixture of like former US presidents. (laughs) Yeah. He's got, he's got got, uh, Nixon hair. Nixon. And then he also looks a bit like. (laughs) <laughs> what's your mate that loves nachos on the simpsons gerald ford he looks like and then gerald ford mixed together i reckon those two would become this man's face <laughs> right so yeah that, i mean he's just if you look at his imdb he's just been on every tv show just a workhorse sort of character actor and are you are you a fan of the office the us one with steve carell i haven't really seen it no right i, I, say, I imagine just, i probably would like it i did not realize this but his daughter is Melora Harden, who is uh, Jan Levinson, who's a, one of Steve Carell's, uh, Michael Scott's love interest on the show and his former manager. So she, All right. there you go. There you go. Uh, She's currently starring on the bold type for people that are bold than I. So I think that makes them sort of like a power family. I believe so. Look at, I mean, check out some of these, these names. I'm just flicking through. He was on Who's the Boss, LA Law, Quantum Leap, Star Trek The Next Generation, Picket Fences, Mad About You, Lois and Clark, uh, wow. Melrose Place, Star Trek Voyager, A Streetcar Named Desire, Murphy Brown, 
Secrets of the Bermuda Triangle. <gasps> murder, she wrote. Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman. Man, if he was on Diagnosis Murder, this would be a dream come true. Ally McBeal, Jag. Like, it, all these shows are big hit shows. Caroline in the City. Uh, Crossing Jordan. I'm just going through the ones I've heard of. Cold Case. The Middle. He's just, wow. What was the show you uh, wanted to know? Diagnosis Murder. No, unfortunately not. Damn. Every was... show but. I mean, there was no room for him. It was only <laughs> only for Dick, Barry and Shane played all the male roles. <laughs> Dick, Barry and Shane, uh, Van Dyke. What a family. What a family. They're actually, the Hardens and the Van Dykes are, are massive uh, rivals. <laughs> Trying to be the most dominant in Hollywood. Yeah. Who's the most dominant TV Hollywood family? Well, the Van Dykes have got you, at least on that show. I think Harden <laughs> might have more credits than the Van Dykes combined, though. But no diagnosis made a credit really for me means no respect. No, that's right. This show's going on a hiatus in a, after a couple of more weeks, Dave. But if we ever come back, we've got to find out if there is a, a monkey in diagnosis murder. There must have been. They did so many weird, wacky plots on there. There's whole episodes where Dick Van Dyke plays five of his own elderly relatives, <laughs> uh, Eddie Murphy, Nutty Professor style. <laughs> he beat, beat the clumps it's, to it. Yeah, it's very funny. Clumps it's very or clumps? funny. <laughs> what? Uh, Either way. I think in Australia it was the clumps, or overseas maybe the clumps. Yeah, the clumps. We, we weren't, they weren't sure our market would understand the clumps clumps so clump. they made us the clumps <laughs> or vice versa uh yeah okay well i think we've got to figure that out and we've all obviously one day we're going to do our podcast diagnosis podcast it's going to be please big. definitely and then when that's over pod bro the episodes of poirot and now analyze in detail i i would love to do both of those so much <laughs> feels like people. All we need is for you to stop working your full-time job and we can okay. make these dreams a reality. All right. All right. That's the only thing stopping us. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it's quite a commitment because Poirot was, it was, it lasted for decades. Such a good show, though. Yeah. Po- po- what was it called? Poircast. <laughs> there are a few possibles. Poircast, Podrow... Um, which obviously looks like pod rot written down. So, uh, and it's uh, a it sounds like us. a Skid Row thing yeah. to me. <laughs> the the albums of Skid Row, Pod Row. <laughs> Maybe we could uh, alternate week to week, one episode of Pyro, then an album of Skid Row. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who can forget all those classic Skid Row albums uh, or songs? I can't think of a single song at the moment. Uh, Murder on the Orient Express. Is that one of those? That that is one of those. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Agatha Christie, <laughs> she's a babe and bitch. It's probably, <laughs> I imagine that's the kind of uh, work they did. <laughs> babe and bitch. The eighties was a different time. <laughs> they said words like babe and, uh, you know, and we can't go back. You know, we're gonna look, keep looking forward. So, they there's this splooge man uh, has blue splooge, not blue splooge, sorry, blue blood. He's a blue, blue blood. blood. Well, it's green blood and blue splooge. <laughs> yes. I don't know. This the blue splooge is implied. They never actually show it. Yeah. Uh, and then so he's on. He's on the case now, and he's slowly trying to track them down. Uh, what? What's the? And then the, the what it looks like monkey piss, that uh, Scully yeah. tests. So Mulder has, has tracked down uh, a doctor who's secretly carrying out experiments because that uh, the man that was running away, the green blood bleeding man, was driving a car that they traced back to this guy called Doctor Barubi. And right. uh, who, who's and when they visit him, he's like he doesn't seem to care about. They tell him, "Oh, your car was associated with the crime," and he's like, "I don't care. I'm so focused on my work. My work is very important." And then <laughs> his work is basically a room full of. What is it? Apes? I couldn't even tell what type of. No, nah, I think they were chimps. Well, they ch- yeah, some sort of chimp were they? Uh, I think they were chimps, even though they called them monkeys. I'm pretty sure they were chimps. Yeah, right, right, right. And then he tells Scully off because she nearly gets her finger bitten, and she he she goes, "Oh, sorry, I thought they were friendly. Why would you think that?" <laughs> That's so funny. What an assumption to make. Why would they be friendly? You've caged them up and are sticking needles in them. 
I imagine they would not be friendly. And she's a doctor. She's a doctor. She should know better. If you, how many patients you've locked in cages that you've performed tests on are happy for you to t- touch them? Right. <laughs> yeah. And um, anyway, they have to leave the Baruby guy alone. And then later that night, we again come across Baruby, but he is interrupted not by an FBI agent this time, but by a black operative who is commonly referred to as the crew cut man. <laughs> Yes, that's us. I noticed him in the in the uh, credits. He was listed as the crew cut man. So because there's so many of these mysterious characters, and it's they're so mysterious, they're never named. So you've got the cigarette smoking man, who's a recurrent throughout the whole series. Then there's this guy called the crew cut man, who's like an assassin of sorts. And if you look throat. through, there's other people. I've got a list here. There's um the Hispanic man, red haired man gray haired man, the plain clothed man, dark man slash mustache man. Take your pick there. And also the black haired man. Mustache man. I'd take mustache man. I like alliteration like that. <laughs> yeah, we do. So do you know the mustache man? He lives my, on my favorite of them all. I'm <laughs> plain. <laughs> my favorite of them all is uh, the well manicured man. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, he's like a early. Uh, what do they call it? There was a trend in the two thousands called. It was just like men uh, shaving. Metros. And stuff. Yeah, metrosexuals. A, metrosexual. That was the big thing. Yeah, what a funny idea! And it was like it was men who would sort of care about how they look more or something. Yeah, a bit more hair gel, some skincare products, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I remember at the time, the big thing was wearing a uh, pink polo shirt and popping the collar. Yeah. Oh, the pop collar. I hate that look for some reason. There's something about it that just makes you look arrogant somehow. I don't know why. And also, the the collar just, it didn't, it never sat properly. It'd always be sagging in one spot. So it just looked a bit silly. (laughs) And it was, I think it was, it makes sense. It's sun smart. But yeah, I don't know why. It's just like, it's just a funny, maybe it's just the people I knew wore it like that were (laughs) kind of arrogant pricks but uh yeah it's just a, a funny old look and that was big for a while I, you still see people like that they're normally people who want to be rich you know right. that's the i'd call that the aspirational yachtsman look <laughs> my dad will do it on occasion he says it's to protect the sun off his neck but I re- I reckon honestly one, one i think he wants to be on a yacht one of the times I met your dad after our one of our live do go on shows, he was sporting a yachtsman look. I think he may have had a popped collar and then maybe even the cardigan tied around the shoulders. Oh my goodness, dad! Yeah, he's he's gone through a few looks over his over his years, and uh, I think he's forgotten who he is. He's forgotten where he came from. You grew up a Moorabbin, dad, but you know, each to his own. Okay. Uh, he, he has he, he does have a few mates who have yachts or at least um not have yachts but he uh his brother-in-law goes yachting sometimes so oh, okay. i think so a bit trying, of that's probably trying, rubbed off on him or maybe he's putting the message out hey i'm uh i'm available i've got yeah. yacht wear ready to go maybe nominate me for the yacht club i'm ready yeah. to go yeah i'm a i'm a real land lover myself <laughs> me too don't, I don't get it. Unless we're talking international waters on a barge. Me too. Which yep, we're, I'm, I'm we've you. got plans of doing it do go on out there in international waters where there's no rules. Anything no, goes. We could talk about anything. We could do the reports about topics that we'd only dreamed of before. That's right. We could expose some of these black operatives, like the crew cut man, the yep. well manicured man. You be, they better watch out. Yeah, we could say their birth names now. Mm. And the crazy thing is we're so high profile in the uh, paranormal investigative world that there's no one would dare kill us. That, he really is very high profile. Like he's got followers and we learned that uh, sort of midway through the first season, uh, he's arrested on a, an army, some sort of army setup where they're cleaning up a, an alien landing or something, or they're trying to capture this really fast, invisible alien. <laughs> And uh, th- so he's he's locked up on that site with another guy who's like a conspiracy theorist guy. And he goes, Mulder's surprised that um, 
he knows who he is and he goes yeah i follow your work i know we know all about it his community reads everything he ever does and he knows about scully and all this sort of stuff so he's he's sort of like an underground conspiracy theory celebrity oh is that part of the and yeah he's also friends with the the three guys that make the lone gunman magazine yeah they're fun so they're so they're recurring characters they actually uh, even got their own spin-off show for one series really yeah, which I've watched. Surprised it only lasts for one series. Couldn't believe it. <laughs> but that—that that were yeah, a quippy trio sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, I think they're, they're good. They're good fun. But yeah. back to the episode. So the crew cut man, he rocks up at the same lab where the guy had been experimenting on the chimps, and um, the next day that man is found dead, and uh, it's clear that the crew cut man has killed him and made it look like a suicide. Yeah, because he left a he left a note, crew cut man out. <laughs> yeah, as why well did he leave his business what. card? What's he doing? <laughs> yeah, that's how arrogant he's got. He had his pop collar. <laughs> his crew cut. Yeah, yeah, the crew cut was the dead giveaway. Oh, yeah. He he crew cutted him to death. Like he just <laughs> stabbed him to death with a crew cut. I'm trying to the crew cuts are short back and sides, right? Yeah, like sort of that real yeah. army army Flat look. top. Yeah. Yeah. Like Chris Mullins in the in the Dream Team. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. His look, he looked exactly like that. So yeah, so, Crew Cut Man was also a great three point shooter. Oh, fantastic! He yeah. was part of the big three. And um, so yeah, the Crew Cut Man is obviously he's killed him. Scully and Mulder are a bit suspicious, so they find this beaker or an Erlenmeyer flask, if you will, and. Um, it says something on the side. Do you remember what it says? And that ends up being quite. Oh, it says something on the bottom, and it's a yeah, it's a key phrase that they talk about a lot further on. It's yeah. two words. What was it? Uh, you keep talking. I'll find it. I'm trying to think of. Oh, purity control. I found that's it here. It. Yes, that's right. Purity control, and then Mulder says, "Scully, can you analyze this?" And she says, "If this turns out to be Mulder P." Uh, mold a pee. <laughs> <laughs> this turns out to be your piss. I'm gonna be so. <laughs> he keeps <laughs> he keeps pranking her by getting her to analyze his urine. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I read somewhere last night that um, uh, there's a there's an outtake in one of the DVDs or something where they keep rolling on that scene and and Mulder goes, "It's an acquired taste" or something like that. Good that bit. is. That's a real Dukov bit, like a yeah. real Mulder bit. Did you notice that there's like all these pop culture references throughout the, the show? They're like, um, I'm sick of this Obi-Wan Kenobi bullshit. Uh-huh. And then they're like, the FBI rock up and they're like, oh, I heard you were ch- and talk to the local police. I heard you were chasing this man because he didn't want to pull over. And the guy's like, well, it's no silence of the lambs. <laughs> and then later on, when Scully's talking to that DNA expert, she's like, we've come a long way since Colonel Mustard with the candlestick. And there's all these just like yeah. little, little references that they put in there. I forgot that about the show. They're, they're frequent. That my, I think the bit that's made me laugh the most so far was in an episode. I think it was one of the first episodes of the It was Blood, an episode you really liked. Oh, I from love the second it. Season. And um, one of the bodies early on, turns up and, and Mulder's called out to this little town that apparently there's never any murders out there. And he's inspecting one of these bodies. That's um, uh, There's been a, like a mini massacre based on a, like a, an elevator told this guy to kill. So mm. he, he killed all these people. And one of the bodies um, Mulder's <laughs> sounds, looking at. That sounds so bizarre. An elevator told people to kill anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just got to accept that in this universe. Uh, yeah. Things get a little bit kooky. So the Mulder's inspecting one of the bodies. Maybe it's even the killer. And uh, the local policeman's like, "Yeah, this guy. Um, you know, he he's not a he's not a, a kind of killing guy. You just never would have expected it. You know, he's like a he's a right fielder in the baseball team. He just some throwaway line about him being a right fielder or some posi- some whatever the fielding position was. I think it was right field." And uh, Mulder goes, is inspecting the body. He goes, what's wrong with right field? <laughs> and then the cop keeps telling him more about this guy. He's gone off topic. And uh, Mulder goes, 
right field's an important spot. Uh, spot. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy keeps talking, and then he comes back to Mortimer and goes, you got to have a good arm to play right field. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just fully distracted by this baseball throwaway line. The cop's still giving him more information. And then he goes, I played right field. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh good fuck that's that was good, bit. good stuff that was yeah that was a real good bit but and it just like it was that was there for nothing but the laugh which i liked it's and very... also advanced the character we've painted a little bit more of a picture of Mulder. he's a right fieldsman well i th- i'm wondering if david Duchovny was actually a, a baseballer because there's a later episode that was really re- well received that david Duchovny actually wrote about oh. a baseballer so yeah oh, cool. he would he wrote a couple episodes, yeah, and, and it was a re- it's a really good one, and uh, it's yeah, it's all about baseball. So I wonder if maybe he is like personally a fan or something. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that I would I'd buy that. Oh, that's cool. Something to look forward to. Baseball it, episode. Yeah, no, it's a good one. Anyway, so back to the episode. This Baruby guy's dead. Mulder goes around to his house, breaks in, finds out that the guy that was shot at the start of the episode that's bleeding green. He's actually still alive because he calls Baruby and says, Hey man, I'm at a payphone. I'm not feeling well. And then the company pretends to be Baruby, but also listening on that conversation outside in an unmarked van using like a, <laughs> like a device that taps into the phone is the crew cut man. Yes. And he's, he's across the road in a classic sort of uh, gardener's van or something. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Love that. And then, um, Duchovny, uh, how does he find, he finds out something about Zeus, re, Zeus refrigeration. He finds out that that's a factory that he has to go and check out. Oh, yeah. Is that, he finds out about that? Is that, is that Deep Throat who tells him? Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe he runs into Deep Throat outside his own house saying what's going on. And then luckily, uh, Fox Mulder has taken some keys from this dead man's house. Ruby, when he goes to this uh, factory in the middle of nowhere, he goes there and he finds the key to open up this padlock. He opens up the, the door and inside the room are five bodies, like life-size adult human bodies floating in liquid. Sort of like that classic, what you imagine when people are like growing humans out of yeah. DNA type thing. And so they, they kind of look like big uh, fish tanks, which is probably what yeah. they were, I guess. And, and one of them even moves and... Mulder's like, oh my God, oh my God. But as he leaves there, the crew cut man and another dude show up. So he has to run away. Which yes. Is the, which is the thing. And then he goes to Scully, hey, you got to see this. This is going to, this is going to change everything you believe. After, after you walk into this room, nothing will hold sacred. And that's when she says, look, Mulder, I just wanted to say, I'm sorry. I should have believed you earlier that there was something in this. Yeah. <laughs> And then they walk into the room and it's been cleaned. It's absolutely empty. So he looks a bit nuts. And Scully, yeah, just allows Scully to have enough doubt remain. But then our friend Deep Throat shows up and says, they're starting to cover their tracks. And Mulder's like, well, why didn't you just tell me about this earlier? And he's like, oh, I didn't think that they'd be able to clean up this fast. It's like, mate, you could have just, you could have just told us about it. Yeah doesn't make any sense that sort of stuff i think you know when he's working for the higher ups i think it's clear that the higher ups are like the production team of the tv show <laughs> i'm only allowed to spoon feed you a little bit of information at a time that's all they want me to do from upstairs otherwise it's these it'll damn ruin the storyline these damn writers <laughs> so and then from from there um molder tracks down this bleeding man again, the, the guy that's been shot that's bleeding green, because it turns out that this Baruby guy, and this is sort of told to him by, by Deep Throat as well, that um, he's got alien DNA and he's been injecting it into six people that volunteered because they had um, terminal illnesses. And this guy that's on the run is the only one that's been left alive because he got injected with the, the, the alien DNA. He recovered but then he also gained like superhuman strength. He could breathe underwater, all this stuff. So the black ops people have cleaned all the other people. They've killed them all but because this guy on the run was a friend of the doctor. He gave him enough time to run away. And that's why he's on the run. Right. <laughs> so they were going to take them all out. 
Yeah, and that's why they're they're really keen to capture this last guy because he's the only evidence right. they've been injecting humans with di- with alien DNA. Okay, uh, have they learnt enough from it by now? Do you think? Well, and uh, well, Deep Throat says that they've been experimenting for decades, so it's just getting more and more. Right. And the, and the and idea then, anyway, is to create it's it's nearly always to create super soldiers, right? Yep, definitely. <clears throat> what a bad then, idea i mean i assume that governments actually know this that that's a bad idea you don't want to start that kind of arms race Where, how long do we last as a as a people when you're using like you're making superheroes it's all over i know but they're like well but if we're the only one with these super soldiers yeah. will be in charge it's the same with the atomic bombs i guess yeah very close for that being the end of the world if uh you know, just have to one bad, more bad decision. Mm, well, the atomic clock, you know, it's, only, it's like one minute to midnight or whatever. And, you know, when it gets midnight, that means <laughs> there's an attack. So, Ugh, cool. Anyway, Mulder tracks down this, this man uh, and he says to him, I'll protect you. And then the man gets shot immediately after that by the crew cut man who's wearing a gas mask. Because it turns out that this guy's blood is toxic. Yeah, do we know that before this moment? Well, we knew that because when the green, uh, the guy on the run, he was actually in an ambulance for a while and they injected him with a, with a needle and then oh, gas yes, started exploding right. from within him and the other people could, couldn't breathe and their eyes were burnt or whatever. And then we come back to Mulder and he's tied up by the crew cut man and his eyes are all red and he looks like he's having a horrible allergic reaction. And uh, that's when... As we said at the start of the episode, uh, this man, uh, the smoking, uh, sorry, the deep throat comes to the scully and says he's too high profile to kill, but I reckon we need some sort of bargaining chip to swap to save Mulder's life. And he gets her access to a facility that we assume is uh, absolutely under lock, lock and key that no one could get into, but because deep throat's highly connected, he gets her a pass. And she gets in and there's only one last door to get through at this secure facility. And the whole time she looks so suspicious. <laughs> yeah. And the guy asks her for the password and she falters and then says, purity control. Yes. And she's allowed in. Isn't that a funny, like, you don't think that that would make him go, why is this woman so nervous? But he's just like, yeah. oh, she came up with it in the end. No worries. Go yeah. grab your alien. <laughs> I went to, yeah, and then when she goes inside, she grabs uh, like a little alien baby that's been uh, sus- suspended in the, uh, dry ice. And, and she what can you... get it. Why can't the people that are using it as a bargaining chip get it? You know what I mean? Why can't the crew cut man just go get it himself? Well, I think that, no, they want to keep it protected. They just want it back. They just don't want oh, Scully right. to have it and expose them. Gotcha. What did you think of the alien when it was revealed? Ah, uh, looked all right, didn't it? The look, was it not too good? Oh, it was just, it was a little bit star me. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I don't remember it being, like, there have been a few things where it's like, oh, they would have been better off just not showing that at all, but because um, the props department hadn't quite caught up with the ideas. But the, that one, I didn't, I'd have to look at it again. I I was, some, it wasn't terrible, but I was just a bit like, wow. Well, <laughs> some yeah. of these episodes I, you know, have been watching, uh, you know, probably with one eye on the screen. <laughs> so maybe they got away with stuff like that. I have, um, oh, well, we're so close to the end of this episode. Should we finish it off? Because then I've got a good fact for you about how it finishes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Great, great. Um, so if, somehow it's actually not explained. Scully's able to leave that tight lock... Uh, a facility under lock and key with the alien under her arm. Yeah. How is she she's able to leave with it? She well, takes she it. knew two words to get in, so purity control, baby. And then uh, she meets up with the smoking uh sorry, I keep confusing with the smoking man with that uh, with deep throat. And uh they make an exchange for Mulder's life. Mulder gets dumped out the back of a van, but after he hands over the alien, Deep Throat is shot to death in front of Scully. Okay, so explain this to me. Why, if they were just going to kill the guy who was making the exchange, why bother giving uh, Mulder back at all? Because he's too high profile. Okay, sorry, it's a too high profile <laughs> thing. Deep Throat isn't. That was the dumb thing about Deep Throat. 
He never got his name out there. That's right. Exactly. No one even knows what his name is. So the actor who we've just talked about, um, Jerry Harden, yep. apparently when he received, this is according to IMDb facts or, or trivia, when Jerry Harden received his copy of the script, it included a note on the front from Chris Carter, who created the series, saying, no one really dies on the X-Files. <laughs> Which is because he, in future seasons, he's in flashback scenes and that sort of stuff. So yep. the actor never really is killed off which is that's kind of a nice a nice thing that is i did not know that that's really nice uh yeah there's another factor it says this is the last appearance of deep throat alive after this episode he reappeared at separate occasions in flashbacks and dream sequences oh i can't wait for some dream sequences <laughs> yeah there's a few sadly oh this is the first time in the series that we actually see an alien body so maybe that's why it affected you because it was like and maybe why it should have affected me because like, oh, this is, this is what they look like in this yeah, they, world. Because bef- I guess before that, even in the previous Deep Threat episode where he said, oh, I've, I've killed, I'm one of three people who's been tasked with killing an extraterrestrial. Right. Mole is told that there's one in there, but by the time he gets to the place where it was, it's no longer there. So you're wondering, is he lying? Do these even exist? And now you're like, okay, they definitely exist. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a, it's sort of like a twist almost. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as he lays dying, uh, Scully stands over the the, uh, the deep throat guy and his last words are trust no one. Yeah. Oh, great. That's helpful. And can you believe that that becomes a uh, Fox Mulder's password? Oh, really? <laughs> Computers. Trust no one. <laughs> That's, I mean, and if I he was reading... good at security, you would know that he should be using different passwords, mixing it Come up. On, right? Mix it up, few characters, letters, all that sort of stuff. But um, I remember reading that for a while that that was a pretty popular password. You know, one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D, and trust then no trust one. no one. That's funny. Uh, the skeptics who love the X Files, they're they're real good at security by totally. all using the same password. <laughs> and then, does it, at the end of this episode, do they close the X Files? Yeah, the final bit of that is there's a little like time goes by, a few weeks have gone by, and then Mulder calls Scully to tell her that the X Files have been shut down. Right. And then it's a bit like, whoa, what, what, what? No info is given. And then it just cuts to the smoking man, who's like the lead ant- antagonist who's been, uh, looks like he's in control of all these sort of things. He's often in the meetings of high up people, like you were saying. It shows him with the alien body inside a room in the Pentagon, and he puts it back on the shelf and it zooms out and there's heaps of stuff a bit like at the end of uh Raiders of the Lost Ark but he's all that it's not the first time we see that room at the Pentagon he also puts in a little piece of metal in there as well earlier in the season that's been taken uh, uh, an alien is uh, placed inside someone's head or something in their uh, nose right and in the very same way he puts slots it into this thing with a bunch of other ones so you go oh there's this isn't the first of it. They've been doing this for ages. And yeah, yeah leaving, it's funny seeing the Pentagon's, uh, like, you are here in the Pentagon side. <laughs> is how they show you that we're in the Pentagon. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's like a, an emergency fire exit plan, which I love yeah. that even in the most, <laughs> like, uh, secure place in the entire world is what they're trying to imply. There's like a map for how to get in or out. <laughs> yeah, love that. Well, here's a, another one of those uh, trivia f- trivia points um this one's about the flask it says the purity control sample molder finds in the lab and gives to scully is actually an earl erlen meyer flask hence the title however a flask for biological samples would have a, would have a screw cap closure not a ground glass stopper like the prop shown the latter type of stopper can't protect biological samples from contamination by environmental bacteria they oh. fucked up. Oh, I hope someone got fired for that blunder. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a great... I love that. I hope someone got fired for that. Um, there's other like great facts, like the fact that the lab is in Pandora Street is a clear reference of the myth of Pandora's box, where all humanity's evils were contained and then unleashed. <gasps> That's a good little Easter egg for sure. That this very... episode takes place from May 8th to May 26th, 1994. Another <laughs> great fact. Thank you so much. Is there, is there a list there? It says like how many people found this interesting, that fact? 
Uh, it... Yeah, two from two. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Because sometimes there's ones that are so bad, it's like one from 15 found this interesting. <laughs> this one got 22 of 46, and it is boring. Here we go. <laughs> At 20 minutes and 51 seconds, the filmmakers perform a dolly zoom in camera effect on Mulder. They're talking about a zoom effect that's used at a specific time. I'm not going to lie to you. I remember thinking that was pretty cool. Okay. Well, that's I'm on, fun. I'd You're be in a the plus 21. On You're in the 22. I, I thought, how do they do that? It's when he walks into the, um, the abandoned factory, that Zeus refrigeration. refrigeration. Have you paused? Yes. Oh, no, I'm there. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought you'd paused. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. I'm like, you I think, just don't, uh, you don't move. You you trying to like, um, not release too much energy. Fair enough. No, I, I I just said something and I just I don't know if you'd heard it or not. And I was like, did he say hey, that or is it zero out of one people have found what I've said interesting? <laughs> <laughs> both, both are true. <laughs> uh, we uh, I guess we should we wrap up that. Um, that's all. Wait, is there anything else you need to tell me about X Files? trying to think of other episodes i love to talk to you about because there's there's a lot of fun amongst it i don't know what my favorite one is so far where are you where are you where are you up to in so i can just have a quick look at the list so i can I think i'm three or four into the second season have you seen uh sleepless yet where they can't sleep yeah that was a good one I like is that, that one, one of your favorites oh uh, yeah i just really remember it i love that i th- thought it was a really good one but i um my favourite that you've seen so far is Blood. I really do like that yeah, one. Yeah, Blood was great. That actor, the Blood guy, was he was really good. He was he was really good. But the one I'm really playing it so strange. Oh, such so a good. strange performance. You're like, I, this is all a choice. But yeah, it's just odd. The one I'm really looking forward to you seeing is episode 22 of this season of season two, which is F. Emma, I can't even say this. Emma Sculata, F. Emma Sculato. Okay. Yeah, it's um, it's just a it's just a bloody good one. I really liked it. But you liked um, uh, another one I really liked from season one, which is Darkness Falls, where they uh, oh, that was a good one, yeah. People are cutting down wood in the in the forest, and then these little uh things are released. Yeah, they're sort of like tiny little bugs, flies. Yeah. And they... and it, at night, and they, they mummify eat you, basically. Stuff. Yeah, they just suck your blood out and make you basically almost mummify you. I really, I like that episode a lot. There was there were like a lot of these episodes. There's weird decisions in it, like the they don't like the light. So when the sun comes up, you're safe. And there's a a lot of they're, they're building up over the last night. They've run out of power, or they're on their last little bit of of gas for the generator. Oh, for the generator, yeah. So it it's going to run out any minute and it, so there's suspenses up are they going to make it through the night with this generator and it it runs out and the sun comes up but they don't like as it runs out i'm thinking holy shit this is uh, you know what's going to happen here but Mulder and scully and the other guy just just chill so chilled out and then the sun <laughs> comes up i'm like well that, why didn't they make that a why didn't they build the suspense up there? It was all built up and then they... Yeah, it was a real strange way to do it, I thought. It's just sort of like a... Blah, you know? Aww. You want the big, you know, the big explosion of, of um, suspense, but yeah, they went a different direction. More like a, a flop. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we made it through. All right. Cool. <laughs> Yes, uh, but that was because they were gonna. They they knew that they were gonna get uh, done. There was still one more thing they had to get through, which they didn't. So, whatever. Anyway, I'm liking this show enough. I think it's yeah, pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I reckon stick with it until you don't like it anymore, or, or like any show. But um, I'm a big fan because I watched it. I mean, I still watch random episodes every now and then, and I rewatched this one when I really enjoyed. it. I was like, yeah, I do love this show. But um, I have I watched when I watched them all through was probably 10 years ago now when i watched right. all of them but so you I were mean, but, but a boy i was but a boy yes You're i was watching them on dvd back then right so uh yeah it, it is interesting to think about 
sometimes there's got to be nostalgia wrapped up in it as well. And when you watch things younger, you forgive more stuff maybe. Mm, but I mean, at the time when, the, when it first came out, I was quite young and I remember when I was, when it was so probably at its peak in the mid mid nineties, I would know it as that scary show that I wasn't allowed to watch. Right. Your parents so watched it? No, but I remember I had a, a, a babysitter a few times who was a big, big fan of it. I think that maybe if, if I'd gone to bed, she'd watch it on TV. And I, this is my first memory of the X-Files is coming out and being like, Oh, being told, no, you're not allowed to watch this. Right. I don't, I just don't think, I can't remember anyone. I, I knew watching it. May I was, maybe I was too young when it was out and I, I just didn't know anyone in the right age bracket for it. My parents didn't watch it. So right. Yeah. But I'm I'm glad I'm watching it now. It is good. And if people are in Australia, you can watch it for free on the SBS On Demand uh, website, which is pretty cool. There's also a, a series about punk, documentary series Iggy Pop made about punk on there too. If people are keen on that sort of stuff. Nice I one. Imagine that you can watch that around the world, but in Australia, you can watch it for free on SBS, uh, which is pretty cool. I think that SBS On Demand thing is awesome. It's got as yeah, much really stuff like as any of the uh, like the paid streaming services yeah there's, and there's heaps and stuff from all around the world absolutely yeah yeah it's really good um it's almost like what a, how does this exist i'm like you know you feel like you've stumbled across this uh secret but uh what what do you give the show we normally rate the media out of a bunch of bananas how big your bunch is how big do you buy when you buy a bunch of bananas oh uh, i'm I'm, am I ashamed to say that I usually get two at a time? No, that's no, there's no shame in that. I don't really like, because I like bananas, but like, you know, I'll have them on, I'll have half a banana on my, because I also have, I have porridge for breakfast and I usually, I mix up the fruits. Sometimes I'll put a banana on it, you know, and I'll probably do that twice a week. Banana so and two, porridge, a great mix. Great combo. So I would give it two out of two bananas. Two out of two. And that's the series as a whole or this episode or both? Both, I really enjoyed it. I thought that even though that it had been a while since I'd seen the mythology, I still got back into it, and I, yeah, it, it had the laughs, it had the, the sort of intriguing bits. So yeah, I liked it. It was a strong season closer as well. Apparently, on that uh, trivia page, it also said that Fox, the network, were apprehensive about finishing the season with the X Files closing because it might make the viewers think that that was the end of the season or the series ah. that had been cancelled. It was too neat of a finish when obviously they knew that it was coming back for another season. The I way they... Really... What what do you think about how they open up the X-Files again in the second season? They've just done that now. That's what I'm up right. to. I, I don't know if it's a spoiler to say, but they might get shut down again multiple times. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think yeah. from that point on, Fox were like, well, it worked for that season finale. Why don't we do it for nearly every season finale? Right. Well, that's something to look forward to. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a real uh, nanny fine, Mr. Sheffield, will they, won't they sort of scenario. Yes. Yes, it will is. Will they, won't they shut down the X-Files? <laughs> uh, Ross and Rachel, will they, won't they? But um, yeah, I, I'm really enjoying it. Um, I don't think I'm quite enjoying it to the to the hundred percent mark that you've given it i'd probably <laughs> say out of my normal bunch of seven i'd give it uh five bananas like i'm really okay. enjoying it yeah that's pretty good i reckon that's a yeah. good place to go in and hang out in and check out the other show i've been watching uh this week or the last week or so has been um the tv version of high fidelity just finished oh. that last night as well have you seen any of that no, I didn't know they'd made a TV version. Do you know you know the movie and the yeah, book? Yeah, I know the movie. Yeah, and the was it Nick Nicholas Hornby? Yeah, Nick Hornby. And yeah, I I it's one of those shows where it's like the characters are so annoying. Same with the movie. It's it's like you know it, they're kind of a bit unlikable. The main character, uh, and that that's similar to. Ah. But the show, I love the world and the music's great and. Um, it's, it's pretty enjoyable, but you're just like, you know, watching people just make so many mistakes. And the point is that they haven't figured it out yet, I guess. I guess that's the point. Maybe it's not. Maybe they're meant to be a hero who's doing everything right. Ah. <laughs> I'm not sure. But um, it's uh, Lenny Kravitz's daughter's the uh, lead role. Oh, that's cool. 
and yes yeah, so i think the, the, the kravitz family are trying to rival the van dyke family yes i think that might be the case um it, and she was on one of my favorite songs of uh 2018 i think it was she guests on a janelle monet track which is a cracking tune so she's uh she's got some skills nice one yeah uh don't know if there's any sort of well-known actors in it there's one actor who reminds me a lot of jack druce who's been on the show a bit before you know dave is a Melbourne yeah, i love comedian. him great guy but his character he's got a big jack druce type smile he's just a nice guy character they're like oh, yeah. how jack druce is he and then it's revealed that he's a rock climber which is a jack druce hobby yeah that's like his big hobby yeah it, it's like someone has written jack druce into the show <laughs> Uh, anyway, the last thing we've got to really do is go through a few Patreons. Would you be up for me reading out a few Patreon shout outs to you, Dave? Uh, yes, absolutely. All right. So um, if people want to, they can support this show at patreon.com slash do go on pod. But you're also supporting Dave and my show, Do Go On, as well as Dave's show, Book Cheat. And also my show with my cousin Sam, Listen Now, which is going to be coming back shortly, where we're going to be going through a different band different album every week this time last nice year, one. last season which was last year we went through the back catalog of cold chisel this time around we're going to go through some different ones i think the first week we're going to get people to vote on we're going to put up me and sam are both going to put up suggestions uh for the vote and they're going to be big 80s rock albums i think sam is suggesting appetite for destruction by guns and roses and kick by in excess Ah. I haven't thought of who my suggestions are going to be yet, but and then I'm going to probably take a couple from uh, listener suggestions as well. So yeah, that's going to be fun. Book cheat. What was the most recent book cheat, Dave? Uh, the most recent one was the episode that I did with uh, you and Cass. We, over two two weeks, we did uh, "Things Fall Apart" by Nigerian author Chinua Achebe. That was so good. I I loved that. It was a real roller coaster. You made me feel all sorts of things. And it's funny, it's one of my favorite. The last two that I've done on that show, I think I've done four books with you on there. Or oh, four, one of them was a play, uh, four pieces of art. And the last two I've loved. The first two were all right. Uh, actually, they've all been good. I mean, they're all classics. But the last two, I'm like, I love these. You I think maybe those? the first two I knew more about. Maybe that's why I didn't enjoy them as much because I knew what the stories were. But uh, this one was like, wow. What a roller coaster. Anyway, would highly recommend that. Um, and this week's Do Go On, you told the story about the two dream teams. That's right. One of which is famously called the dream team at the 1992 Olympics when NBA players were allowed to compete for the first time in the basketball. Um, the USA sent the what's called the dream team, 11 of the greatest ever players led by Michael Jordan and uh, Magic Johnson. And crew cut Ewing. Yeah, that's right. Um, Larry Birdle all these greats of the game. And then also at the same Olympics, uh, Lithuania was sending their first team since 1928 because they'd only just become a country again after gaining independence from the USSR. And they were very, very talented, but they didn't have any money to send their players. And it's uh, a real uh, t t a tale of two very different teams, both uh, with a lot of success. That's an amazing story. And there's been a bunch of people saying uh, that it's one of, the, one of their favourite episodes ever. Which people also said about nice. the week before as well, which was about the yes. North Pond Stranger. People have been saying we're in hot form lately. Yeah, get on it. I reckon we're just going to keep rolling, hopefully. So, yeah, definitely check those out if you're in a, into interesting stories. Uh, a lot more structured than this show. This, this show is a lot of, um, and then uh, what happened was, <laughs> um, whereas the reports are all written out and well prepared for that. So check it out if you're keen on that sort of stuff. Uh, but one of the rewards for supporting those shows at patreon.com slash do go on pod is you get uh, a shout out on this show and you get to tell me about your favorite primate or anything really. And I don't, I don't read them until I'm reading them out. And then uh, we all find out together what you said. So firstly, I'd love to thank Robert Farley for his support. He writes, Hey guys, if you like monkeys that are not afraid to seek medical help, then you'll love Dr. Lucien Sanchez from D Garth Marenghi's dark place. Was played by oh, Todd R yes. Rivers, who is in turn played by Matt Berry. Great show. Um, Very funny. It's the kind of it's the kind of show that I I'd love to rewatch for this, but I also feel like 
doing a comedy podcast about a comedy show that's already funnier than anything I've done. It sort of feels <laughs> weird. It's like, what do you do? You just go, and yeah. then they said this funny thing that was this, which I do enough on this show anyway. Like I <laughs> poorly told that, uh, that bit of uh, molded dialogue before, but um, yeah, I found that when we did the Simpsons a bit, it was sort of, it's hard, you're sort of just recounting a thing that's better than you. So that's yeah. And it is difficult to just do it justice because it's already very, very good. Yeah. Uh, whereas yeah, other things, oh, I don't know. I never figured out what the show should really be. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I will while it's on break. Anyway, uh, Robert goes on to say in the apes of apes of wrath's episode he's a gun carrying sharp dressed single pierced eared md with attitude and if this isn't enough for you one of his colleagues throws her feces around a wide range of facetious if you will okay i don't quite get what that is but plus richard aoade on a tricycle sayonara simians fantastic suggestions for people who aren't familiar with Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. I think it's quite big in Australia and England. I wonder if it broke in America at all, but we're yeah, looking great. up if you it's haven't bad. seen it. Yeah, I think it might, uh, for a while there, it was definitely all on YouTube. So. Oh, right. That's cool. So if you can, if it's still there and you can check it out, it's very, very funny. And it's, yeah, only six or eight episodes and that's all they ever did, but it's very funny. It's the British way with their comedies. They'll, they're here for a short time, not a long time. <laughs> That's not the same. <laughs> uh, what a, a good time, not a long time. Um, <laughs> Grant Cheese right, writes, I think my favourite primate would have to be that, that vest. See my vest made from real gorilla chest. <laughs> Great Simpsons reference. Glad you're here that. for that one, Dave. Love that. Love that. That's from the, the 101 Dalmatians parody of the Simpsons. Uh, where the, they're the... the the scene where they mimic the movie scene where they're counting them. One, two, three, and the time passes. <laughs> Six puppies or whatever it is. Very <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Grant. Ashley Dickinson writes, I'm so glad my get fucked monkeys comment wasn't read on Erica Fleury's episode. I was just monkeying around. Apes are great, but still go team people. The greatest apes. Ashley, you know. <laughs> Been hanging out with Evan. You've been hanging out with Evan too much. That robot, you know, he's been programmed <laughs> to love humans. You you should be better, Ashley. Uh, we are apes. I feel proud that we're so closely related to chimps, bonobos, orangutans, and gorillas. But, you know, I think we're only in, we're, we're lucky to be in there. Uh, Sam Hanora writes, hi, Matt and Evan. Can you play the part of Evan, Dave? Hello. My no, favorite... Actually, sorry. No, her, her, Evan is. Oh, hey, Matt. Yeah, that's good. That Evan. was better. Sorry. That's Thank you. Evan. Just need a bit of time. Hi, Matt <laughs> and Evan. My favorite primate that I don't think has been mentioned on the show is the Debraza's monkey. Great one. Great suggestion. They have such a distinctive shape compared to most primates. And in some of the pictures I found, their bodies look more like those of cats or birds of prey. Plus, you can't beat those sick white beards. Wow, that sounds like quite a combo. I'm just going to pull up a picture just to refresh my memory. Because I, I remember putting them up for the first Primate of the Year uh, award and they did not get many... They did not get many uh, votes. <laughs> Where ah. was it? Dead browsers. Jeez, Google is not helping me here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're amazing. Dave, you looked them up? I'm trying to. So D E space B R A double Z E R. Holy moly! <laughs> Hang on, it said. Did you mean desserts, monkey? <laughs> Maybe. Oh wow, these are amazing. Love that. So good. Nice what one. Gr- good choice. Yeah, the coloring of the the brow and everything amazing looking. Fantastic suggestion. Thank you so much, Sam. Uh, John Rains writes, Billy Gibbons, the guitarist of ZZ Top. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's their favorite primate. Very good. <laughs> Gibbons in the name. Uh, is he a man parading as a monkey? A monkey parading as a man. Couldn't come up with a more natural name like person human man. 
<laughs> What's really going on here? John, that is a great question. Billy Gibbons is clearly a gibbon in a man suit. Hmm. <laughs> Billy Gibbons. And he can shred. What a guitarist. We're all thinking it. We're all thinking it. Yeah. And the oh, we've got a an episode of Do Go On that relates to ZZ Top coming up or ZZ Top as we say over here. Uh, <laughs> but um, he's not. The other two members of ZZ Top um, are in it. So Dusty, Dusty Hill, and uh, what's the other one called? Gary Beard. No, what's his first name? Anyway, something Beard. But yeah, something Beard. John Beard. So, I don't know. So we've got a a series that launches in less than a week now. I think this Friday coming on stupid old channel on YouTube. We're doing a nine part web series for do go on. Yeah, that's uh, right. Free to watch. And I uh, was starting with, uh, I think a t- the tale. Are we allowed to say this? This is, this is breaking. This, be, this is an exclusive. Exclusive with, uh, the story behind the Hollywood sign. And, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> Not as straightforward as one might think. Yeah, that doesn't. When you suggested that as a, a topic, I'm like, what could this actually be about? But it was really fascinating. Really fascinating. I loved it. And that episode was so fun to record. That might have yeah, even and- been the episode we recorded it months and months ago. But that was the first time uh, I think you talked about Dick Barry and Shane. Van yeah, that's Dyer. right. There's some good Dick Barry and Shane chat on that episode. <laughs> So uh, I highly recommend go um, subscribe to that web uh, that YouTube channel if you haven't already. There's also a game of, Evan shows on there, gamey gamey game, and uh, lots of other stuff. Sketches that I've done from the last ten years, I think, are on there. Maybe. Uh, thank you so much, John, for your Billy Gibbons suggestion. Timothy Bengal writes, "G'day, hope you're well. I really like the proboscis monkey, uh, which we call the dick nose monkey on this show. They always look mildly disappointed." like they've just dropped their ice cream the mild defeat of existence anyway have a good one shuckers <laughs> shuckers emoji thanks timothy um yeah the yeah i guess i mean they do have a dick on their face you, does that make you sort of defeated or like a winner you know what i mean they've they ama- another amazing they look like another jim henson creation they are fantastic I forget how great they look. And then the full body shot, just the sort of the gray, they, they start quite yellow fair at the top and then go into gray down low. They are amazing. Fantastic. What a great suggestion. Thanks for bringing them back to my attention, Timothy. Love the proboscis monkey. Uh, it's going to be weird uh, having a time where I'm not going to be looking at a different funny monkey every week. <laughs> based on listener suggestions. Just put in your calendar, you can do it. Or get random monkey generator, the app. Ah, oh, I should get that. If it doesn't exist, I should invent that. And yeah. finally, Jenna Schaefer. I've had to do a few more because we're, we've got a bunch to get through over the last few weeks, Dave. Uh, so finally, Jenna Schaefer or Schaffer. My favorite primate is Captain Huggy Face, alias Bob. A superhero Sorry, from the kids show Word Girl. <laughs> Jenna, you're not allowed... Well, I mean, you are allowed to make things up, but you've definitely made this up. Captain Huggy Face from the show Word Girl wow. is the put-upon sidekick with no powers, except for the officially listed power of being able to eat anything. My little brother loved this show, and the lovable yet sassy Captain Huggy Face helped, it, uh, helped make it fun to watch for older kids too. Captain Huggy Face. Anything, I'm looking at Dave? him. He's got a sweet outfit. Yeah. So he is real. Great, great outfit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a great outfit. Using the primary colors nicely there. Red helmet. He's got a helmet for protection. Safety first. Lightning bolt yellow on the on the jumper. Red pants. Yellow belt. Blue top. Fantastic work. All right. Well done, Captain Hug- Huggy Face. You've won me over. Well and done. Thanks, Jennifer. The heads up there. Um, so that brings us to the end of the episode, Dave. Thanks so much for joining us here on this morning, although now it is in the PM. <laughs> we did it. We made it to lunchtime. Yes. We did it. I'm going to have a nap. Um, <laughs> so 
where can people find you? They can obviously find you on Bookcheat, which we've mentioned. Uh, there'll be links to that in the show notes. Also, your pie-focused Instagram account. Yeah, that's right. I don't post that much, maybe only once or twice a month. But if you want to see a photo of me eating a pie in a different location, you can follow me on Instagram. And your tweet, Twitter is very amusing as well. So people should follow you on oh, there. But I'll put links kindly. in the show notes. Uh, people that'd, can be, find, that'd be great. Thank you. Find us at Primates Pod if you want to. Um, yeah, only a couple more episodes now. Before we go on a break, uh, follow me for other things at Matt Stewart Comedy on Instagram and Facebook and Matt Stewart underscore art on Twitter. Uh, this episode possibly will be up on YouTube if you want to watch me and Dave, <laughs> uh, you know, being very animated in this episode. Um, you can do that at youtube.com slash Matt Stewart. You can also find other interviews that I've done on there on this little series that's been called Matt Chat or Getting Chatty with Maddie. Dave was on the first episode. Evan's been on there oh, as well. And you, you grilled me. You grilled me. I cried. Yeah. It was Off an air, afterwards. Time. Afterwards I cried, but But then yeah, we made up. So yeah, thank God. I was just trying to, you know, get it out of you. <laughs> yeah, Who are you didn't... really, Dave? <laughs> Who do you work for? Who do you work for? Uh, <laughs> So yeah, uh, check all those links out in the show notes. Um, I'm doing cameos still. I did a couple this week. They, they're sort of cool. coming in every now and then where I get to, basically there's a website where you can pay 20 bucks and I'll say whatever you want on a video message. <laughs> they're often birthday messages for loved ones, but I've also uh, had one where I told my apologize to a mum for a dog coughing up a condom. Um, and there's been... I mean, I'll be up for anything, really. Uh, That's brilliant. That really is. So, and then the mum got me to reply uh, by asking him to move out. <laughs> asking the son to move out, which is funny. You know what the latest is on that? Have they moved? I haven't heard anything. They haven't got back to me about it, unfortunately. <laughs> but I'd love, to, I'd love to get an update if you are listening. Um, <laughs> Hope the dogs are right as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, who gets the dog in that split? Um, so yeah, I really, I'll say whatever you like. Um, I normally try and make it a bit of fun. A few facts in there, throwing in a couple of facts. Uh, I'll break up with your boyfriend or girlfriend if you need to, (laughs) if you don't have the guts or propose to them, I'd enjoy that even more. Although ideally you'd probably do those sort of things yourself, but, um, just saying here if you need. So, uh, until next week, thanks so much for uh, listening. Thanks so much for being involved, Dave. And as we always say here at Primates Podcast, trust no one. Not even the monkeys. No. Later. Bye.